Okay, thank you for joining me uh, today. My name is uh, Jaran Ersson, and uh, I'm from a company called Technipalago. Uh, I uh, live and work in the beautiful archipelago east of uh, Stockholm in Sweden. And this is the view from my window. Well, not really, <laughs> but close. Um, uh, I'm self-employed uh, in this uh, crazy little company. And uh, why I say crazy, you will uh, uh, figure out in a while. Uh, most um, people um, in the IT business that are uh, self-employed are subcontracted into a, in a larger, larger organization uh, doing uh, contract work. But um, I'm um, managing to uh, sell directly to uh, customers uh, and um, developing uh, uh, the projects myself. And uh, the projects, projects are uh, uh, building custom uh, business applications for small to medium-sized uh, companies. And I use um, uh, the Grails uh, uh, platform uh, for that. The um, customers that I have uh, are, uh, as I said, small, medium-sized businesses from five to 100 employees. And uh, they are in different industries. Uh, it's uh, uh, telemarketing and I have a food producer, and a company doing house inspections, uh, looking for cracks in foundation and, and water leaks and things like that. A business association with, um, with uh, a lot of companies, a uh, uh, group of companies uh, that uh, get together, and also transportation uh, companies. So it's a, it's a variety of uh, industries, uh, but they are, um, uh, they ha all have uh, common uh, requirements for uh, their application. And my background is uh, in the CRM business, uh, customer relationship management. Been doing uh, that for 20 years, uh, building uh, CRM applications in Java, C++ and Java, and uh, Enterprise Java, AGBs and all that. Um, but I'm uh, now very comfortable uh, working with Grails uh, in these projects. And, um, as I said, um, um, all these um, companies have um, uh, more or less the same requirements. They are, they are commercial companies, so they, they have uh, a customer. Um, all of them, I think, have uh, a customer um, domain. And they need to communicate with the customer. So they need uh, communication uh, tools uh, within the software to, to communicate with their customers. And they need to manage documents. Um, could be um, bids, it could be contracts, uh, whatever, presentations. Uh, so, um, uh, and they need um, to manage uh, tasks, to-do lists, um, what to do next uh, for this, um, if it's a sa sales rep or whatever. So these are common requirements for most of my, my customers. They have these uh, four uh, domains that uh, they um, um, they want to work with. So, how can I manage as a small company to to uh, build um, um, unique applications with common functionality? And uh, uh, the challenge is uh, that. Uh, for me, that um, the customer has uh, th they have grown up, grown out of Excel, and they need something, uh, th something more advanced to uh, to uh, support their business process. And they have sometimes they have looked at um, standard software like uh, Microsoft CRM and, and um, the similar software, CRM software, but due to uh, feature limitations or or budget uh, constraints, they, are, they don't want to go that route to, to, to customize uh, with um, 
and do a full-scale uh, customization because it could be too expensive. They need something uh, simple that gets the job done. And um, so how should I do that? Should I develop from scratch each time for each new customer? Uh, no, that's, then I can't compete. Then my project would be as expensive as, uh, as others. And um, should I keep uh, version control branches for each customer and uh, using the same application? No, that uh, would lead to maintenance hell. Um, so what's left? Um, copy paste. Uh, <laughs> take the, uh, the, the best project and copy into another customer? Uh, no. Uh, no copy paste. You should try to to do something that uh, um, split uh, the project into smaller components that uh, um, several customers can um, can share. And this is where Grail's uh, plugin framework is extremely well suited for. Uh, you can do a, a Grails plugin that uh, extends the data model, and um, you can add services and uh, and uh, provide static resources. How many in here have um, uh, done um, a Grails plugin and published to to Grails Central? Yeah, a few. How many have done a plugin and published uh, locally in within the company? Yeah, great. Some more, yeah? So you know uh, uh, the plugin uh, architecture pretty well. Um, and the, the Grails platform provides so many extension points for plugins, so there's almost no limitation what you can do with, uh, with a Grails plugin. So to create a plugin, you uh, just do Grails create plugin and the name of the plugin. And uh, immediately you have <coughs> a full Grails project that you can can uh, run, uh, but it's it's empty. But then then you can uh, add your uh, logic or domain classes, uh, your entities. So the uh, uh, plugin project is uh, really a normal Grails pr project. Uh, it's uh, the difference is a, a plugin descriptor in the root uh, of the project that says. Uh, uh, the version sets the version number of the plugin and uh, and uh, can listen for for callbacks um, lifecycle callbacks from the application so the plugin can do initial initialization in the beginning when the, when the, uh, the application starts so when you do a plugin you uh, have a few op uh, several options to to manage them um, uh, manage their dependencies you can um, uh, install uh, the plugin in um, in the local Maven uh, repository, the local local Maven cache, with just uh, Grails Maven install, and uh, the plugin is uh, packaged um, and uh, and um, put in the cache. So then you can in uh, applications that want to use the plugin, you can add a normal uh, dependency like my plugin and version number, and the application will bring in that plugin. And it's the Maven local repository that uh, are used there. Um, you can also do snapshot um, versions. Um, so you modify your um, plugin and uh, publish it to um, to um, the local Maven cache, and the application will. Um, recognize that uh, the snapshot has been updated and it will update uh, um, the application so you don't have to increase the, the version number. But this is only true for, for Grails uh, 2.3 and, and above. Uh, below that uh, you had to, to do some of the workarounds like increment the version number of the plugin uh, each time you published it or uh, um, just remove the IV cache um, every time. So it pulls in the, the snapshot version. You could also use uh, a remote repository manager. And I use uh, Artifactory, but you can use uh, others. 
and uh, that supports um, the snapshot in the previous versions of uh, Grails. But now uh, um, this is supported. So if you use a remote repository manager, uh, Maven repository like uh, Archiva, Artifactor, or Nexus, you uh, um, add uh, to uh, to your uh, settings.groovy. You add the um, the URL, uh, username, and password for publishing uh, plugins to that repository. And once you have done that, you can um, use the Grails publish plugin command that normally defaults to publish into Grails central. But uh, with uh, with the dash dash repository option, you can tell it to publish to uh, to your your own uh, artifactory or or. or a repository manager. There's also a trick that I use to I um, put in my build config a default um, setting so it's always um, pushing to to my own artifactory so I don't have to specify on a command line every time. So um, if you have if you host your own uh, repository like like I do uh, you specify uh, just a, a Maven repo in your build config.groovy. Then you can um, um, include the plugin dependencies in your application as, uh, as usual. Another option that is very popular is to, uh, to have um, the plugin inline in the application. And I do this uh, in, the, in the beginning of a plugin project. Um, where is actively developed? I um, first uh, do the plugin and unit test and integration tests, and and when when I feel that the, my uh, my design is uh, worth uh, testing in an application, I put it at, as an inline plugin. You specify outside the dependency resolution block uh, the closure. You put uh, Grails plugin location my plugin, and then a path to the plugin project. So now, when you run the application, it will compile the plugin code for you, and um, uh, it will be active in the application. And uh, every change you do to a controller or service in the plugin will immediately reload the application. So you don't have to to publish the plugin anymore. There, it, it works as if it were um, part of the application. So um, how should you think when you do a plugin in, uh, in Grails? Uh, well, these recommendations are based on um, my actual work, and this is how I do, and it works uh, very, very well for me. Um, and um, the most important part is the separation, separation of concern. Uh, each plugin should be focusing on the domain uh, that this uh, plugin should support. Uh, as an example, we will see later in this uh, little CRM uh, contact manager demo, where then the address book where, where you keep your uh, co companies, uh, contacts, relations between companies and, and people, it's in one um, plugin called uh, CRM Contact. And that focuses only on um, management of uh, companies and contacts and the relationships between them. Um, and um, also, uh, what I found uh, successful is to split uh, any user interface uh, code into a separate plugin. So you so I normally use I normally build a um, service um, plugin, the service layer and the domain layer in one plugin. So it, it extends the domain with, uh, in this case, uh, companies and contacts, uh, domain uh, persistent entities, and then services to persist those companies and contacts, uh, and other uh, services to to work with that uh, domain objects. But the the back office uh, interface, user interface that people work with, um, it's uh, simple CRUD, oper CRUD operations. 
uh, to uh, add a company, to edit a company, to so search for companies. That's a user interface. And in my case, it's uh, a Twitter Bootstrap uh, based uh, user interface. But it's in a separate plugin. So I don't mix um, any uh, like server side uh, code with, uh, with the user interface code. And I also try to separate, uh, to avoid the uh, plugins communicate, communicating with, uh, with it, each other. Um, and instead, I do uh, uh, use uh, eventing. So if a uh, plugin needs to send an email, it does not uh, depend on the email plugin, because some customer may want to have some other way of uh, communicating uh, with some uh, other um, mail server or uh, technology, push it on a on a message queue, for example. So the um, if some plugin wants to send an email, it's, it uh, creates an event um, uh, and just tell I want to send an email from uh, to this uh, contact, and uh, the application is the one that listens to the events and it gets the event that someone wants to send an email. And okay, in this application, the email um, sender is the normal Grails uh, mail plugin. So the application forwards the request to, uh, to the mail plugin and the mail is sent. But in another application, uh, the mail could be sent in some other way. So the application is the, is the director uh, that controls and routes all events. Yeah. So um, <coughs> separating uh, plugins into uh, into and focusing on one task on one domain for each plugin makes it easy to test. You can test the plugin isolated from other plugins, and the boundaries are are very strong here because. If you open the plugin project in your IDE, you, you get code completion for um, all the classes within the plugin, but you, you don't get any code completion to other uh, plugins. Uh, so you don't, by mistake or, or being lazy, pull in some dependencies from other plugins, because you can't. You're working in one plugin project uh, at a time. So, so uh, it forces the developer to stay within, within the box and not um, um, getting into a spaghetti situation where, where um, you have um, lots of interconnected dependencies between plugins. And um, this um, keeping the UI and uh, um, business log logic separated into different plugins makes it easier to, to use the same uh, domain layer, service layer plugin into an API uh, application that talks to the same database, but uh, uh, only responsible for, for a REST API, for example. And uh, you, can, you can put uh, the, the contact, um, the address book, you can put it on uh, maybe the web front for customers to, to log in and change their addresses. Or, but they have no access to, to the back office CRUD uh, user interface. Um, the, they, they only have uh, access to the REST API or services. And you, you could, maybe not in Grails 2, but uh, you can, you can begin build uh, some um, microservice style application that just focuses on maybe REST API for contacts, companies. And so don't mix user interface with, uh, um, with uh, business logic. But uh, the user interface plugin, the, the CRUD um, user interface for, for the address book is of course, um, allowed to depend on the, the domain model and the, uh, the services for easy access to, to GORM and, and, uh, and to, uh, uh, to the services. Not directly with GORM, <laughs> should go through services. Um, 
And then if you have some common um, functionality, functionality, you can put them in, a, in a one, one or few common plugins that other plugins are allowed to depend on. But keep it small uh, so you don't get a number of dependencies between plugins. I have uh, like a security plugin that everyone depends on for, um, for permission control and then a common plugin. So two or three uh, plugins are kind of common. And events. Uh, Spring has uh, built-in support for asynchronous um, um, and uh, synchronous events with, uh, in the application context in the Spring. Uh, and there's also products like uh, Spring Integration that has more advanced event support that you can use. And uh, Apache Camel, as we saw uh, yesterday in the talk, supports uh, the event message pattern so you can publish event to, to a queue or to a topic. Uh, but I use uh, Platform Core, the great plugin Platform Core, but I only use the event uh, um, support in there. The Platform Core has some other features that I don't use. So I, um, I only use the uh, eventing and this uh, great support for, for both asynchronous events and for synchronous events if you want to block and wait for the, for the answer. Normally you send an event and you, it's fire and forget. You send an event and hope that someone takes care of it. Uh, but Platform Core eventing uh, done by uh, Stefan Maldini is, um, is uh, great. But when he, uh, Stefan, extracted that uh, code, the eventing code from Platform Core and mailed, made the Grails events plugin. So it's a, an evolution of, uh, of the Platform Core events and I should really use that one. But the status of that uh, plugin is a uh, little, little uncertain. uncertain. Um, I cannot really rely on it in, in production code uh, today. So, but I'll be very happy if that plugin um, got um, that someone took over it, or, or <laughs> it's Stefan um, uh, took um, some priority on that plugin and raised it to a, so it, it's uh, production ready. Then I'm happy to to switch to to that. So I'm I'm searching for a better. Uh, event situation, but Platform Core wor works uh, very well today. So uh, the application is the director and routes events from one plugin to, to another. And um, what are the drawbacks? Um, this is um, a slide I uh, borrowed from uh, Peter Ledbrook's talk uh, yesterday on application uh, architecture in Rails. Uh, I only see the, I'm so happy with the Grails uh, uh, infra uh, plugin infrastructure, so I, I don't see any drawbacks, <laughs> so I forgot that. Uh, but I put in an in the slide because Peter reminded me that, uh, yeah, debugging events uh, is, um, can be hard sometimes since it's asynchronous. You, you uh, publish an event and uh, maybe nothing happens. Where is the problem? So it can be hard to, to deal with. And um, it's no easy code path that you can follow in the IDE. Uh, the, the, the event is just published on, uh, on, a, on a queue. So an exception handling is, uh, is um, also kind of tricky. But uh, I only see the positive um, benefits of it. So, <laughs> so let's try a, a demo. If the Wi-Fi gods are with us, um, can uh, st start from um, from scratch. So, um, actually, we should do explain a little more of. Uh, I didn't didn't tell you. Um, how I use um, the plugins. Um, before, a week ago, I prepared this demo and I made up some fictionary demo of uh, 
something abstract. And then in the middle of that, or really in the beginning of it, I got a tweet from Luke Daly who said that most software conferences talks seems to be about language, languages, frameworks, and tools. And maybe build builders of real software are too busy. And then I thought, OK, if you want to see real software, then look, this for, is for you. <laughs> so what I'm going to present is, uh, is uh, real production uh, plugins. And I have a toolbox. Uh, the last three years, I've been working with, uh, with, with uh, Grail um, plugins this way as I described today. And uh, during these <coughs> three years, I've been build, uh, build uh, a toolbox of, uh, I'm up to 40, maybe between 40 and 50 plugins um, in my toolbox. And that's why I'm so successful, successful in bringing m much customer value in very short time, as you will see in the demo. I can build quite advanced stuff in, in very short time. So I have the, the contact, uh, CRM contact plugin for, for companies and, uh, and people. And uh, the contact light is the user interface uh, part of it. And then the, the content uh, plugin is for managing uh, uh, content management, like managing files, uh, documents, uh, upload documents, attach documents to other domain entities. So I can attach documents to, to contacts. Um, but the, the, the content plugin has no knowledge about the contact. It has only knowledge about uploading um, uh, files and uh, publishing files and things like that. The task uh, plugin uh, managing uh, like a calendar, like a to-do lists, something that is uh, um, uh, happening at one date and time and then a duration. That's a task. Um, and uh, campaigns is are for, uh, for uh, email campaigns. And uh, the product, product inventory is uh, where you can have um, um, all your products. And the product is focused on just the product uh, domain. There's no, no connections to contacts there or tasks or whatever. And there's a blog. And, and, uh, and I use Twitter Bootstrap for, for the user interface. Uh, part. So, the demo. If we start um, um, with uh, from scratch, we can. Uh, you're familiar with uh, with this uh, start page. We, this is um, an empty application. So, what I do when I when I start a new customer project is that I do Grails, create app, and then the customer name, or whatever, application name. So create app, new customer. Then I get this one, and default Grails application. That's not much. But um, if I um, stop this one, and uh, let me If you switch to, um, I prepared like uh, like a chef. I prepared in the micro microwave. If you check out um, milestone one, uh, don't let's see. Can you see down here that I um, added uh, some plugins? So I added um, uh, the contact light plugin. That's the user interface for the address book that ha manages uh, companies and contacts. And then I added the uh, security Shiro, Apache Shiro plugin uh, for, for uh, authentication. And I added uh, the internet in internationalization uh, plugin to handle uh, uh, different languages and store, instead of storing uh, uh, in property files, uh, all the labels, I, I can optionally override that and store it in the database. So I can easily change uh, uh, labels. And then the bootstrap user interface. So if, if we uh, uh, start uh, this version that we have now only included um, um, 
the contact light plugin is the is the focus here. That's the the plugin that I that I installed. If you look at the uh, application project, there is no domain, no controller, no service. It's the application is just a container for uh, uh, for this uh, these plugins. And um, if um, I need to, uh, yeah, we can look in uh, Bootstrap. There's some code in, in Bootstrap. So we'll get a clue of uh, what this will do. Every, uh, this um, CRM framework that um, this is all about is, uh, uh, supports multi-tenancy where I can have one database and several customers can run in uh, one database. Normally, I do one database per, per customer because it's uh, so different, but I have a few customers that are running that let uh, third party people log into their uh, system and therefore they need to support multi-tenancy. So I create an account um, that is, um, um, above all tenants, and then I create the tenant. But I could create multiple tenancy, tenants. Maybe geographic locations. There's one company uh, that have um, offices in, in uh, several cities, and I want to have uh, separated those uh, into uh, different uh, databases. But te technically, it's the same database, but uh, they, they have each one tenant that they use. So. So I create a tenant and then I add uh, two companies and uh, two, uh, two people into this uh, um, um, database. So it's slow to start, but it should start very soon. I did a war, war file to, um, to be, um, so it's quickly to reload. Should I maximize this or? I can just uh, do it like this. Ah, okay, I'll reload this one. And uh, look what happened. We got a login um, um, fields and, uh, and we got a bunch of um, plugins uh, here. Uh, let me do. So we got uh, CRM contact light. That was the one, the plugin that we installed. And it brought in the CRM contact, which is the domain layer and the service layer, and some other plugins. So let's log into this uh, application. And we'll see, uh, see what we got. We have contacts. A menu option appeared. And if I um, search for all contacts, we see that we have uh, two people here. We have Søren, uh, the awesome organizer, <laughs> and uh, and we can um, we can even uh, we can even say that we have integration with the mobile, so contacts are synchronized with the, with your mobile phone mobile phone if you have a QR scanner. Check. <laughs> it's a, that's a demo thing, but it's working. Um, and and uh, so he, this is the CRUD uh, uh, screen where we can we can um, manage um, add new contacts and uh, uh, tag them and uh, stuff like that. So um, if we um, look at me, I can say Rails. And um, so it's a simple CRUD screen for, for contacts. And if, um, if I want to, um, to print a contact list or an address list or export to, to a spreadsheet, uh, this will only trigger an event that uh, the user wants to, to export and the application will, will listen to that event and uh, um, decide what sp spreadsheet uh, is the default uh, spreadsheet. So. And um, if I do a query for, let's do a new query, 
and search for, for Grail's people. We find um, and I can say save the query, Grails, people. So now when I um, um, here are here, I can do I have a saved query called Grails people, and it will find Grails people. So these are the basic uh, CRUD things. So, um, so let's um, take this one step uh, uh, further. Stop this one. And we go to uh, Milestone 2. What we do here is that we bring in uh, uh, another uh, plugin called uh, CRM Content. And this is the content management plugin that, uh, that I talked about that manage uh, uh, documents. So if I uh, run this one. We can also look at one thing I did in Bootstrap. Um, I uh, if you see that one, it says uh, plugin service register view, and uh, this is. Uh, a uh, feature where I can inject uh, tabs in uh, in the CRUD uh, screens. So the contacts um, page had only uh, a simple one tab, but uh, now I'm installing the uh, the um, document management plugin, and uh, I'm injecting into the contact the show dot gsp. I'm um, injecting another tab to show documents attached to that uh, company. <coughs> so this is uh, an extension point that I have in this framework. Uh, to, for each customer, I can add custom tabs to the standard plugins. The standard user interface plugins can see, look completely different depending on who's, uh, what the customer are. Because I'm injecting um, uh, tabs that are specific to their business, so I can arrange fields in, a, in an order that they want and add extra stuff that they want. Um, so, if it starts, we will see, it should start pretty soon. We will see an extra tab in the um, uh, the contact uh, screen. It's still booting. It's one of the drawbacks is, um, is probably not um, because of uh, the number of plugins, but the total number of uh, artifacts, like services and, and uh, domains and, uh, and things like that, that increase uh, the startup time of uh, of Grails. So I'm uh, happy that uh, Graham um, said that we should um, try to improve the startup time uh, for Grails. Because adding more plugins and artifacts uh, uh, increases the, the startup time. So we look at uh, the awesome organizer again. We see uh, that we have a files tab. So uh, we can now. Um, upload files and attach to, uh, to Saren. And uh, th this one is a very, cool. very appropriate. <laughs> so this, uh, just by adding that uh, uh, content management plugin, I got the content management uh, domain classes and the services to, mani to manage uh, content. And uh, uh, also, a, an extra tab in the uh, contact screen to uh, uh, to manage uh, upload content, and there are other features in the in the contact management plugin for like Dropbox features that you can um, you can email uh, secret <coughs> secret links to uh, to customers to to get them to view uh, um, uh, view documents. So now we are on milestone 
three, and this uh, application gets more um, advanced. Uh, if you look at the build config, we're still only um, using the content. No, I'm adding a plugin called Task. Yeah. So the CRM task plugin is for, for to-do lists, uh, managing your calendar and appointments and stuff like that. And, uh, uh, and task, as I said, uh, in, in, in this case, a task is something that has a start time, uh, a date and time, and it's uh, something that has a duration. And uh, What's better suited these days uh, with something that has a start time and a duration um, in here? Can you think of one? Yeah. Uh, talks uh, at GreatConf. That's, uh, um, could, could uh, use the task uh, plugin because the task plugin is so generic. It's for something that has a start time and an end time and um, some other properties. Um, so what I'm doing here is uh, I'm including the task plugin, and then in the bootstrap of the application, I uh, I call a service method called import uh, conference schedule, and uh, in the application I have uh, this uh, uh, service that reads the uh, the speaker speaker list and talk list from the, the REST API that the Android application uses. So hopefully we will see. Uh, and also another thing I did was in the application I now changed uh, some labels to, uh, so instead of uh, uh, task, I'm now calling, uh, it's, it's now talk instead of task, because the label for, for task is task in as default. And uh, the calendar I call agenda. Uh, so, and the task name is now name of talk. So if we uh, refresh this one, uh, can go to here, and log in again. We have an agenda, and I didn't didn't split it up in, in different tracks. So all the tracks are. Uh, uh, where are we? Cut your Rails applications. With uh, my Omlats is uh, not working. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, we can see a speaker list. And uh, let's take like uh, Peter. Uh, Peter Ledbrook has two talks. So in the generic plugin, this is just um, tasks that are associated with this uh, contact. But now we managed to build uh, a, a conference management application for GreatConf. So this is how I. I think when I, when I work with the customers, okay, what, what are we looking at here? It, it's, it's really a task. It's something that starts and, uh, and ends, and it's connected to a contact or some project or, th or so. And then I can use this generic uh, task plugin uh, to, uh, um, to model this. Um, and uh, the task plugin has also uh, features so you can get reminders, uh, reminders, uh, and when, if I have put a reminder on a task, when the time is up, uh, my time is soon up, I see, when the time is up, an, an event is sent, uh, an alarm event is sent, to it, and the application listens to that event, and we can see that in the um, GreatConf service, I think. If, if uh, IntelliJ didn't, didn't hang, I would say that. The um, application listens to, uh, uh, to that event and uh, sends an email to, uh, to the responsible for this, uh, the responsible user for that, um, for that task. S and let's look at uh, service. This is how you listen to 
events. So you have uh, <coughs> um, you have um, namespace CRM task and the topic was alarm. So it's listening on this uh, topic and this is uh, the event mechanism from um, from platform core. It listens to um, to the topic alarm uh, in the namespace tars tasks and uh, the payload of that um, event in that event message I have the ID of the task that are, are due or is due for for an alarm. So I bring up the task and I um, bring up some um, email template from the contact management plugin. So all content like email templates and document templates are stored in the content management plugin. And so I bring up um, the template and then I push it to the to the mail um, server. Uh, so this is how, how we I do in the application. If you look at the application now, it's, this is an application that can handle a schedule for a conference and all the speakers and all the speakers info and addresses and it can also handle alarms when, the, when each talk is, uh, is about to start. And the only thing in the application is uh, this little service that uh, it should of course include more code to, to send the email. But but it's only one service. There's no domains, no controllers. And we have a little um, piece of code in Bootstrap to, uh, um, to uh, load some demo data here. But um, we have a pretty powerful, small uh, contact management application. Um, and if you go back to uh, to the slides, uh, this is uh, the um, the toolbox. Uh, this is just a sample of uh, the toolbox that I use, and uh, um, mostly I manage to to do a project with say eight of these standard plugins, and then I do one or two, like 80 percent or 90 percent standard plugins, and then I create one extra or two extra plugins for this specific customer because they have some unique needs. Um, but 80, 90, 95 percent of the code is shared with all of my customers. And uh, every time I do an upgrade for a customer, I, I raise uh, the version numbers of all the plugins to the latest and greatest. So I uh, don't have any customer that uh, are behind. There is, uh, as I said, there were no r um, relationship between uh, a document and a uh, contact. But how did we attach? Uh, the document to the contact with this uh, picture of a beer. Uh, how did we attach that to, to Søren's contact record? Well, I'm using what I call dynamic associations. It's a string in, uh, in the document uh, uh, reference, the attachment, that points to CRM contact at 42. And the CRM contact, it's a spring being for that domain. And the 42 is the primary key. So. I uh, have a service that is very generic that uh, takes this um, uh, reference and uh, looks up uh, the contact. So that's a way where I can uh, um, reference to domains in other plugins um, at runtime. Um, very, very simple. And I have also abstracted queries into a selection plugin. So I can, I can when, when you saw when I, when I saved uh, a query and called it Grails People, uh, it was a URL that was saved in the database. Uh, a title was uh, Grails People, but, but the URL looking something like this uh, was saved. So I can, um, I can um, construct a query by um, adding um, query parameters and then store that and um, then um, uh, this query can be reused every time. So um, there, there are um, other options there. So summary, focus on the domain model. And I don't mean uh, the domain, the entities, the persistent entities. I mean the domain model of the plugin. Uh, the task plugin should only focus on tasks, schedules, um, and um, have features for 
for managing that specific domain. So the task plugin is, is very simple. The content plugin is, uh, is only managing files. And like the product plugin is for, for products. Uh, the product plugin has no features for um, uh, prices and campaigns, uh, spring campaign, lower price, nothing of that. That's up to the application. The product pr plugin is only responsible for for the uh, the product uh, physical or the technical product and uh, um, use events. That's uh, the huge huge success. And I wish I started earlier to use events. I started when Platform Core was uh, released. I should have used uh, events uh, um, from the start. And I'm continuously um, um, refactoring into use more events because it's, uh, it's a success factor here. Um, and uh, if you attended uh, Larry's talk just before here, he ended with, uh, with um, a wishful thinking of some third way of doing. We've done monolithic applications and we're now talking about microservices, but microservices brings uh, um, a lot of uh, great uh, features, but also some some problems. And uh, Larry's uh, wish was uh, a third way where we do modular monoliths, and that was a perfect uh, um, intro for for my talk because uh, this is what it's all about. It's uh, modular monoliths um, that I'm doing, and it's uh, worked for me extremely well. I have. Uh, uh, around 20, 20 Grails application uh, that I host, the hosting provider, that uh, share 90% of uh, the code. 10% is uh, unique for each customer, but they are all, all sharing uh, the same. And it's completely different industries, completely different look and feel, because I can change uh, the theme, of course. So uh, it works um, great. And all the plugins that I um, showed today are uh, available on GitHub. Uh, and I will, uh, um, now after the conference, I will uh, publish, um, uh, start to publish um, them, at least the, the one that you saw in the demo. I'm going to start to publish them to Grails Central. So, uh, so you can um, actually use these uh, plugins. And uh, I call it uh, the great CRM framework. Uh, so. Uh, if you uh, uh, follow uh, Grails plugins on Twitter and you see something about uh, Great CRM, then you know it's uh, me that started to push out uh, plugins. And I plan to push out uh, from my toolbox of uh, uh, 40, 50 plugins, I'm going to push out like 20 of them to Grails Central in the coming months. Um, and the first will be the contact uh, management. So. Uh, yeah, thank you for for listening. And um, do you have time for questions? No. You can you can come you can come to me if you have uh, questions. Thank you.